Um, and, and by that, I'm going to introduce Evan Johnson. He's been working at LastPass before. Now he's at Cloudflare. And again, another talk I'm looking forward to, uh, a little bit about password managers. Evan? Hello. Cool. Okay, so my talk is called Evaluating a Password Manager, but uh, it should say lots of password managers and how people should evaluate them. Um, it's kind of a, it's supposed to be a, give people a holistic view on password managers. So about me, I work at Cloudflare as a security systems engineer, um, so I wear a lot of different random hats there. I'm kind of the company's de facto AppSec person. Um, besides that, I like hunt vulnerabilities in our products and our infrastructure and everything. And then I, I kind of either fix them or come up with plans to fix them or um, push them off on someone else who can fix them. And, um, and I've kind of been working on the website too as well. I've uh, since we were just talking about accounts and account management, I rewrote all of the account management stuff for the Cloudflare website and how it does sessions, how it does uh, all these different cryptographic tokens like CSERF tokens and stuff. Um, and I also wrote um, PassGo, which is a password manager written in Go and it's command line based. Uh, the whole reason I wrote it was because uh, I wanted a password manager with more modern crypto for some systems, systems things I do, like I use it for protecting my SSH keys and, um, and whatnot. Oh, and I, I previously worked at LastPass uh, as an engineer. I worked there for a year and uh, wrote a lot of code, so if you use LastPass and you like it, uh, I helped with that. <laughs> okay, so uh, so trigger warning, we're gonna talk about password managers, and the reason I put this slide is because uh, password managers online are super polarizing. If you've ever read a Hacker News or Reddit thread or Twitter thread about people talking about password managers, it generally goes nowhere, and it's, um, it's just kind of a lot of people arguing. Uh, and basically everybody in those threads is an expert and they should be the ones speaking. <laughs> you're, you're on the right place now. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so a lot of people loved LastPass, they loved KeyPass, they loved 1Password, they hated, they hated all those same things. Different people hate LastPass, different people hate KeyPass, KeyPass X. Uh, and that's not what this talk is about. This talk is supposed to be really general and something that can, that's unbiased and you can kind of step back from, from what you like and what you don't like and kind of be able to evaluate um, what is good. And so I'm not going to be throwing bad password managers under the bus yet and we'll, <laughs> we'll talk about that. Um, Okay, so about the talk, we're gonna, def uh, I have a couple goals. So I wanna define the properties that all password managers that regular people should have. This talk is mostly geared towards regular people. Um, point out some things that are really good that password managers, that some of them do, and, uh, and talk about some technical details about some of them as well. We'll dive into a little technical stuff. And so, uh, which password managers? So uh, if you're unfamiliar, which maybe you are or you're not if you're in this room, um, one password is like I would describe it as the Apple juggernaut of password managers. It's, uh, it was for a long time considered really Apple-centric, uh, but great password manager. LastPass, uh, Windows and Linux people liked it. These two are probably the oldest the two at the top, LastPass and 1Password. And LastPass is also got really, pa uh, got really popular. The Android UX was really great for, uh, they really did well on Android and Linux and Windows and uh, kind of not Apple. 
for a while, and then there's Dashlane. Dashlane is pretty pricey, and they've, uh, they've raised a ton of venture capital. I think I just checked before this talk, and it was like 52 million. They've raised a Series C, which is an absurd amount of money for password managers. Um, Keeper, which is from, it, I first heard of it at LastPass, and it kind of got its start on mobile, I think, and it, uh, it's, it kind of uh, developed from there, and they took off from mobile. Then there's KeePass, KeePassX. These are, the whole KeePass environment, uh, like ecosystem really confuses me, and I don't fully understand it. Uh, there's lots of them. And then Password Box, rest in peace, they got end of life. They got bought by Intel a couple years ago, and they just got end of life. Pass uh, is a command line password manager written by uh, this really good systems programmer guy. It's written in Bash. It's Git backed and GPG based. And then, so I put these two at the bottom. These are the most interesting uh, Excel spreadsheets and password journals. These are things people might be using that uh, we want to all we want to compare all of these together. Um, so. This is kind of a generic design diagram of the, it might be hard to see, high level parts of a password manager. So I put four of them, and there might not be four of them, and maybe some of them are more tightly coupled than others. You have the cloud servers where, if, it's, if the password manager syncs, you have servers that the password managers, or the passwords are stored on. Then you have uh, kind of the back end core of a password manager. Uh, so if you use one password, there's a thick client there, and LastPass, it's all extension based. And this is the part that talks to these servers and gets down the passwords and decrypts them. And then you have uh, the application core integration. I just, this is the UI, the part, the, all the features that are built on top of this decryption, all those all the junk that gets decrypted, all the features that you see. And then, I don't know why I put this last one, it's not really a part of the password manager, just the application that the password goes into. That's where, that's a final resting place for the, the password. Uh, goes into, hopefully, the correct application. Uh, and, like I said, some, might, some password managers might have all four of these, some might not. Uh, so the first part is the servers, and this is going to be missing from things that don't sync. And the important thing here when you're evaluating a password manager, it, the first is really obvious, that your passwords should not be on the server in plain text. And there are actually some like enterprise password management solutions where it is in plain text. And uh, it's uh, not just enterprise, these, these are like really big business, like Hundred million in revenue, doing password, password uh, management, at, that I uh, I've heard of, and it's kind of insane. Um, but what else should be encrypted here? It's uh, everybody kind of does it different. All the password managers. So the big two things that generally differ is some password managers don't encrypt URLs, and some other ones don't encrypt usernames, and the. Uh, I don't think there's a right answer here about whether or not that's good or bad, or I think it's could, there's room for improvement for both of them, but I don't really see a, a huge reason why, uh, why having everything encrypted, or I, I'm not sure how to weigh this. And uh, so I came up with two tick boxes for uh, evaluating what's stored, and it's whether it's encrypted, which pretty much all password managers encrypt uh, what they have on their server, and then what the passwords that are on the server, and then whether or not the, the, they encrypt all site data. So if a, URL is, if a URL isn't encrypted, then they wouldn't get that second tick box here. Um, the password manager wouldn't. So what else is on this slide? All right, and you generally have a back-end part of an application that does all this heavy lifting of fetching encrypted blob data and uh, decrypting it. And uh, 
this is pretty boring. Uh, the, all it does is kind of consume an API, get a bunch of data, prompt you for your password, and decrypt it. Uh, and um, uh, sometimes, uh, well, so this is where all most of the crypto lives. So it'll uh, all the crypto primitive choices live here, and uh, I guess that's significant because all the crypto lives there, and the uh, all the features that users see. Um, Autofills passwords contains all the bells and whistles, contains user interface. Uh, so the this might manifest itself in different ways. Like autofill, uh, most password managers will have an autofill feature where you just press a button and it pastes your password in, or uh, maybe not paste, maybe it'll just uh, modify the DOM on an HTML page. And uh, that all lives here. And all the flows of generating a new password and saving it and, uh, and then communicating with this backend process that then talks to the API to save this new encrypted blob, that's, that all starts at, at this layer, user facing. Uh, and then one of the most important features that you'd see from, um, that users see is security details about their passwords. So if they're reusing a lot of passwords, if their um, weak passwords are everywhere in their password vault, uh, good password managers will tell users that they have bad password hygiene. And uh, they'll, they might be really loud about it. OK, so what, what actually matters? Uh, and I think this breaks down into two things. What features should all password managers have? And what are security critical and need actual technical eyes to look at and, and, uh, and kind of evaluate? And I think the first one is more about usability, and the second one is security, because that's kind of all there is in, in, this, in this world. OK, so what should they have? High level, really fast. Um, the most important features that I came up with is password manager or password generator to create, to create different kinds of passwords. If a password manager doesn't have that, it's pretty bad. Just uh, duplicate password finder, security, finding security details like we mentioned. If you have duplicate passwords, if you have weak passwords, your password manager should notify you. Um, strong crypto. This is an uh, interesting one, which we'll talk about in a minute. But your password manager should be should have strong crypto. Just having crypto doesn't doesn't really help. Uh, it has to be strong, and uh, not all not all password managers are vetted as as such. And I think you won't have you won't have as big of a problem with the big names that I listed at the beginning, but. There are hundreds of password managers. And once you get out in the weeds and you may find something that works for you, it's kind of scary if, if nobody's actually looked at the technical details under, under the hood. And then import, export. Uh, you should be able to jump ship if you hate your password manager. Um, and the most important one that I think in 2016 is a password manager having mobile, good mobile um, user experience. And um, what did I put on this slide? Password managers with a mobile. Yeah, so in, in 2016, like so many users are mobile first. And that is getting more and more prevalent. And uh, if, if, you're, if you just download uh, KeePass XYZ and it's somebody just forked KeePass and made some changes and it you can't actually use it on your phone, even if it's really cool and open source, it, it like is not going to help you that much. Uh, and so uh, so here is like a Snapchat sign up screen. And I pick Snapchat because I kind of picture Snapchat as kind of the next, well, it's already arrived, the uh, next uh, social network. Like, uh, And I also picked it because 
at the beginning of Twitter, people were like, this is really stupid, and it kind of became something really big. And so people signing up on Twitter, they might choose a stupid password. Like, that, my first password on Snapchat was really horrific, I'll, I'll tell you. But, uh, but like, who knows, Snapchat might be really important, like a year from now. People might be getting their news from, from news clips on Snapchat, who knows. And so if, you, if a password manager can't reach their mobile users, that's like, that's really bad. Uh, and uh, also, just outside of password managers, authentication on mobile devices is just atrocious. Uh, people have tried like federated credentials in apps, like Pokemon Go came out, and they had the Google, the Google sign up. And besides the fact that like the, you could sign up with your pre-existing Google account. Uh, uh, and besides the fact that the permissions were uh, way too permissive on what you actually allowed Pokemon Go to do, it's, it was just bad UX. Like, you had to completely re-enter your username and password. It, you didn't get anything for free. So password managers are the best we have in mobile UX right now. Uh, so this is the, this kind of shows off on Uber, who uses the Agile Bits, uh, the one password, they have a way for apps to integrate with a password manager. And I feel strongly that this is, if your password manager does not have this option, if you use iOS, so obviously it's different for Android, but on, on iOS, if, if you're not taking your password manager seriously and you, and you are working at a password manager company, like this is super important, this little, uh, it's in the red, not my email blurred out, but the, the little uh, lock icon. Uh, that will allow you to just click that and paste your password into the password field. And, or uh, it's not paste. Um, I'm, I'm not sure about the details, but it, it allows you to get this, this icon and utilize a password manager from inside of an app. Uh, and the other thing in mobile is browser support. And uh, while, while most apps have not figured this out, uh, most password managers have figured browser support out. And pretty much all of them will, will support uh, different, uh, pretty much all password managers support this way to be presented in a, in a Safari browser, uh, which is good. And so the, the important, reason why I mention uh, mobile and really focus on mobile is I think it's the way to win an argument on the internet since that's the only place good important good important arguments are fought uh, with people who use um, people who use Excel spreadsheets and and password journals and stuff I got in an argument with somebody on a slack channel and uh, this guy said he all of his passwords were too sensitive for a password manager, and he could never trust software. And he kept an Excel spreadsheet, or he kept something that he wouldn't, he refused to tell me because it was too high security. And I was like, first of all, this is just absurd. But second, like uh, the mobile case, the mobile case just, I feel like, completely trounces his argument because, uh, because who knows where this guy will be? He might not be at home when he signs up for Uber or for Snapchat. And um, if he if he doesn't choose a good password, that's like bad password hygiene, and his his system fails. Um, so uh, the scary part of password managers is go to the Apple App Store and type in password manager, and there are like hundreds of results, and who knows, who knows what these things are doing. Okay, so what, what's, what features actually need security evaluation? And uh, I think after last week, we all know browser filling logic needs security evaluation. Uh, uh, integration with the, between the browser extension and the, and whatever background, uh, no, integration between 
uh, like what the user is doing and the how the user interface talks to the the back end system that decrypts all the passwords. Because in, in Dashlane and in, in 1Password, it's, uh, they talk over a WebSocket. And, uh, and it's not tightly coupled. Like different password managers all have a different software architecture where some are more monolithic where uh, you might, it might only be extension based, but some really rely on this thick client on your machine. Uh, crypto primitives, so uh, this is all came from browser world and crypto primitives don't exist that well in JavaScript. So basically everybody just copies and pastes in uh, crypto, their crypto primitives that they need. And who knows, who's looked at these? I have no idea. And then HTTP headers, random uh, regular AppSec kind of things. Uh, so how to dive in and look under the hood. We're, uh, so the, the parts you're gonna be looking at is the API, the crypto, the browser extension. And if you are an AppSec person and you've always wanted to learn about how to dive in, we're about to look at it quickly. So um, here is an example of how you could examine the API for LastPass and how it works. So. Uh, for LastPass, Password Box, most of the monolithic extensions where they don't have this uh, client on the machine, LastPass does now, but uh, all the logic's still in the extension. You can just go to uh, this extension screen in Chrome, Chrome, colon, slash, slash, extensions, and load up the background page and start diving in. Uh, that's, you have to click a, that there's a checkbox in the top corner that says enabled. Uh, so you have to click that, then you can click background.html, and you can start uh, diving into the technical details of how the extension communicates with the API for, for a lot of extensions, actually. And here is uh, my LastPass vault, and um, you can see all the, once you click background.html, it'll pop up a, a Chrome debugging window, and there's a network tab. You click the network tab, and you can see all the requests that are being made, and uh, you just click on them, and you can see all the technical details. It's amazing. Uh, and apps that don't do that, this, it's a little harder to kind of dive in and reverse engineer because uh, you have to reverse engineer a thick client instead. You, uh, who knows? Like maybe they do, uh, H, like public key pinning inside their their thick client, and it's a little harder to dive in. This is really nice because Chrome gives you a debugger. It's amazing. Uh, next is examining the crypto, and uh, pretty much all password managers use have pretty similar crypto primitives that they've chosen. Uh, most of them. <laughs> have chosen like AES CBC um, and similar encryption and uh, PBK DF2 SHA-1 for deriving a key. And I think this is mostly because of difficulty getting primitives into the JavaScript world where they might need them and um, whatever. But this, uh, I think that the best practice now is to use an AAD cipher. And uh, it's really hard. One challenge that you kind of realize when you're working as a software engineer on a password manager is let's say tomorrow you wanted to switch from AES CBC mode to a different crypto primitive. Let's say you wanted to go way back and way weaker and pick DES, which we don't use anymore. And please don't ever use. And uh, it's really hard because you start, you can't just flip a switch and everybody's passwords are encrypted with something different. Moving, moving forward is, is not easy. Once you've chosen a primitive, it's really sticky. Uh, why? Who said why? Why is it sticky? Uh, just be, 
just because, so you encrypt all your, all your passwords, you have a thousand passwords in your vault, and uh, we chose, let's just pick something really weak, DES, and we want to move to AES, and you would have to download new code <laughs> from whatever update process the extension has and the client has, and that all your things have to be decrypted and encrypted again, or you can wrap them, uh, and that's, that's kind of weird where you start encrypting a ciphertext, and uh, it's, it's just kind of a, not an easy process. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not easy. And so uh, now we want authenticated encryption and pretty much no password managers uh, have authenticated encryption just because of this problem. Like if it was easy, everybody would do it, but uh, it's not. And so examining the browser extension, thanks, this is Tavis uh, Ormandy. He found a really bad bug in LastPass last week and he's looking at more now, more password managers, so I put his face up. <laughs> uh, and so uh, finally, uh, examining the browser extension. Uh, so the part that he found the bug in is in LastPass was their autofill logic. And this is um, fairly easy to dive into uh, because of Chrome DevTools again. Just right clicking on a page and clicking inspect element and then you can click, the, you pop open the developer tools, then you can click sources and then uh, content scripts, which is right here, and then you can just browse JavaScript, all the JavaScript fill logic. This is 1Password's fill logic, LastPass fill logic right next door. It'll format everything for you. It, it'll, uh, it's really easy to dive in and start reading their code and evaluating it. And so out of this talk, um, I kind of came up with an idea where if you've ever heard of uh, the EFF and a lot of people have created scorecards for things like encrypted messengers and, uh, and whatnot. I want to come up with a password manager scorecard where there is uh, a lot of properties that I define and password managers either get a green check or a red check, or red, I don't know what that's called actually, a red no. <laughs> uh, and uh, I think this would be really useful just uh, to have something where non-technical users can kind of come see and get a non-biased way to evaluate a password manager that suits their needs. And uh, I want to, I got this idea while I was working on this talk, and so I have not made it, but I want to publish it in the next couple weeks and work on this. Um, so maybe you'll see it, I hope you see it. Uh, <laughs> but I plan on publishing it soon. So does anybody have questions? Sure. So for those of us who work with users all the time, oh, for those of us who work with users all the time, where will you publish it? Uh, so I have no idea. I wanted to work uh, at Cloudflare. Our PR people have good contacts, and I was hoping to get it somewhere that it might get visibility. I plan on putting it on my Twitter on EJCX underscore and uh, Hacker News or something. I don't know. Hacker News and my Twitter are places that you might expect to see it. So do you know of a personal password manager that syncs where you can run your own server? Uh, yeah, so uh, pass, pass, which I mentioned at the very beginning, the website for it is passwordstore.org. It is git backed and it's, if you like GPG and command line, uh, the, reason, the reason I recommend pass is because there's kind of been an ecosystem built around it where uh, you can use uh, iOS app to 
to access your passwords as well. And it's, it uses Git as the back end, and so you can just host a Git server and have your passwords. Last one. Oh, uh, Jeff Goldberg from Agile Bits, makers of one password, at the risk of <laughs> pushing, of pushing um, self-serving criteria, I was a bit surprised at the extent to which you downplayed the not having the URLs um, encrypted, particularly if that is actually stored or available to the operators of the system. I mean, uh, now, for a long time, I mean, I understand the technical reasons why it's difficult to get those encrypted, um, and when we made the transition to a new data format in which we actually managed to encrypt that, we have been hammered by our users for making that transition too slowly. So, um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to ask both Evan and Jeff to join me for dinner, and I will put them on the upside sides of the table. Uh, and, no, 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 no. And, I don't think you need to And do anybody that. who wants to come and watch, I'm more than welcome to do that. But now, uh, I will have to say again, thanks, Evan. Yep, thank you. Thank you.